Hey guys, Eric Anojas here. I'm a real estate agent with Navy to Navy Homes, and today I'm gonna to break down costs associated with buying a home, what you should know before you even get involved and started in the process. So a lot of times we get started with something, we're like, man, I wish I would've known what the upfront costs were, or even just the costs associated with it. So I'm gonna break down nine tips for you guys and just kind of tell you exactly what goes on behind the scenes when buying a home. So stay tuned, you're gonna really wanna know this information before buying a home. Well, thank you, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about costs associated with buying a home and things you should know about before even getting started with the process. So a lot of times we have conversations with our first time home buyers, and I'm specifically gonna address this for our military community uh, and specifically the VA loan. Uh, just because that's really what we're familiar with and it's going to be really going to ha have some specific topics here for the VA loan. Okay, so a lot of times here, um, because the VA loan is a zero down payment, the I guess the idea is that maybe I don't have to bring any money to the closing table or bring any money at all to buy a home because it's zero down. So uh, that's kind of some misinformation right there. There are actually, there's nine different costs I'm going to talk about today that are affiliated and associated with just buying a home and then also with a VA loan. So the first one I'm going to talk about are closing costs. Closing costs are a, a part of every loan. It's what it takes the bank and the title company to get everything set together and make sure we can close this uh, transaction, the sale. Typically it's about 3%. Those are closing costs and prepaids make up that 3%. 3% of the loan amount, I should be more specific about that. And typically with their VA loan, the purchase price is the loan amount just because it is 100% financing. So like on a $200,000 house, you're looking about $6,000 in uh, closing costs. So just keep that, up, uh, keep that in mind that zero down payment is not the same as zero closing costs. There will be closing costs associated even with the VA loan. So uh, typically that conversation that we have is that, hey, if you don't have that uh, $6,000 of 3% available in liquid, then we're gonna have to be uh, very creative in how we structure our offer and see if the seller will help us out with uh, covering your portion of the closing cost. Remember here, uh, not only do buyers have closing costs, sellers also have closing costs as well. And we'll talk about that in another video. Okay, so now that's enough about closing costs. Just keep in mind, it's about 3%. And also keep in mind that maybe the sellers can help out with uh, uh, paying for your closing costs. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is that after you go under contract, you should typically have about $2,000 liquid. Now those $2,000 are broken up into three parts. You're gonna have your binder deposit or some places known as a good faith deposit or earnest money. Uh, but here in Northeast Florida and Jacksonville specifically, it's called a binder deposit. So the binder deposit is typically about 1% to $1,000 of the purchase price of the home. So like on a $200,000 home, typically we can get uh, put a $1,000 of binder deposit. Up to $300,000, sometimes you're gonna ask, see the seller asking you for a 1%. Keep in mind, that this is a negotiable portion of the offer, so you don't have to do that. Uh, it's something that you guys can negotiate between uh, agents, seller, buyer, they'll help you out. Uh, so that's portion number one. The second part of that $2,000 that's liquid, uh, it's gonna be your inspections. In your inspections, uh, you're gonna have, depending on a V, so if you're using a VA loan, you're gonna have your Woody Storm Organism inspection that's required by the VA loan. It's also known as a WDO inspection, or some people will call it the termite or the pest inspection. Um, and then you're gonna have a home inspection. Funny enough, the home inspection is actually not required by anybody, but it's super and highly encouraged to get a home inspection because when we go through a home, there's a lot of times that we don't even know, like just looking at, we, we're, we're walking through the house, we're gonna see surface level, but you know, I'm gonna say that's a wall, that's a roof. You know, I may know a little bit about, like that's an architectural shingle, that's a three tab shingle. I can give you expected life range on it, but I can't tell you specifically, like that roof's gonna last you another 12 years or another 10 years, because that's outside my realm of expertise. I can tell you what kind of roof it is, but uh, what kind of shape it is, I don't know. A lot of times the home inspector is going to come in there, they're going to go in the attic, they're going to test all your plumbing, your electrical, all, I mean, they're going to look at everything, all your major systems. So it's definitely worth the investment there. A home inspection is typically, with the WDO inspection, is going to be anywhere between $450 to $550. So we're just going to call it $500 just for average. So that's kind of part two. So you got your 
Typically, it's about a thousand dollar binder. Then you got your home inspection, which is about five hundred dollars. And then the third part to that is going to be your appraisal. So typically, after your home inspection is complete, you're going to order the appraisal. Reason we say that is because you don't want to order your appraisal while you're still in doing your inspections. Because what happens if you find something that's majorly wrong with the home? You're like, Ugh, I'm not going to buy this home anymore. So don't spend that extra five hundred dollars if you don't have to. And that's where I get to it. Appraisers, appraisals are about anywhere between $450, $500, sometimes a little cheaper, sometimes more. You as the buyer don't get to shop around for the appraisal. You just tell your lender if the lender's going to reach out to the appraiser or management company, the AMC is going to then reach out to their appraisers, and the appraisal is going to go, appraiser going to go out and do the appraisal in the home. And then they'll report it back to the lender, and then you will get notified as a buyer. So you don't have to worry about that part. You're not shopping around for an appraiser. You just got to tell your lender, I'm ready to order or tell your agent, tell your agent, hey, I'm ready to order the appraisal. We're gonna go move forward with this home. Um, so you'll be able to move forward. So again, I was gonna recap that. So that $2,000 like that we were talking about in the beginning, it's gonna be broken down into three parts. You got your binder deposit, you got your home inspection, and then you got your appraisal. Typically, those are equally about, equally uh, about $2,000. Okay, so after that, we're gonna talk about things that you might not even thought about uh, going into the buying process. So typically when buyers are shopping, they may be shopping, like you may be shopping early on in the process, um, maybe six months, nine months, a year out before even getting into wanting to talk to an agent or talking to a lender. Perfectly fine, do your shopping. So much information's out there right now uh, and you can see all the homes, you know, just check them out and see what you like. But you're gonna see something really funny. You're gonna look in Zillow and it's gonna say Zestimant and it's gonna say, Estimated payment. Now, uh, let's just take that example of a $200,000 house. Let's say the estimate's $200,000 and your monthly payment is only gonna be like $900. And you're like, wow, this is great. I can afford $900, this is great. Keep in mind though, you might not know this. I didn't know this before I got, before I got into the industry. That $900 is only taking into account principal and the interest. There are actually two more portions of that uh, mortgage payment that you gotta take account for. And that's your taxes and your insurance. And we're gonna talk about that here in a second. So when you're shopping around, you gotta take into account taxes and insurance on top of that little estimate that Zillow's give, giving you for your estimate, uh, estimated monthly mortgage. So on top of that $900, you may have an additional three to four, $500 more on top of that. So now your payment's looking anywhere between 13 and $1,400. And you're like, whoa, that's a lot more than I thought I was gonna spend. So keep in mind that that's an additional cost you have. And as a matter of fact, your taxes and your insurance are part of that closing cost. Those are actually called prepaids. And that's why you kind of get the 3%. So depending on what season of the year you're closing, if you're closing towards the end of the year, they're closing in the beginning of the year. If you're closing towards the beginning of the month or the end of the month, those prepaids are all gonna change. So those are additional expenses that you have that you might not even known about. Uh, you also have me consider loan fees. There's some lenders out there that are charging like loan origination fees or other fees like the VA funding fee. Or if you're, um, the cool thing about the VA funding fee though, you can roll it right back into your loan. But hey, you gotta keep that in account. The VA funding fee for your first time use is only 2.15%. If you use it more than once, which you can, cool fun fact, you can use your VA loan more than once. A lot of people don't know that. Um, that. Again, we can talk specifically to a lender to give you more information, but the second time you use it or subsequent use, it's 3.3% of the loan amount. But that funding fee can get rolled on to the loan amount and then you can just finance that whole thing. Um, how about moving costs? Have you considered that? How much money do you have ready to go? So on top of your $2,000 liquid that you're gonna be spending on that, do you have money for the boxes, the packaging, getting the moving truck, are you doing it yourself? Are you hiring, are you gonna hire your friends with some beer and pizza? I don't know. But just keep that in mind that you're gonna have closing or some moving costs as well. And then lastly, my last tip number nine, maintenance. Hey guys, when you have, when you own a home, you're no longer calling your landlord. You're not calling the apartment complex. You're not calling your property manager. Guess what? You're calling yourself. Or you may have a home warranty. Now, if you have a home warranty, typically uh, it's anywhere between 75, 100, 125. It's what they call a trade call-in fee. So you call that trade specifically to your house. Um, through your home warranty, they'll come out and they'll fix what whatever was broken. But you gotta keep them, you gotta budget that. Uh, you know, roofs sometimes are only 20 to 25 years, depending on when you bought it. You may not have that many years left. 
you may have to pay a deductible on that for your insurance. Your ACs can run anywhere between four and six thousand dollars. On average, about five thousand dollars for a brand new AC. How about a water heater? Maybe eight hundred dollars for that. What about flooring or your garbage disposal? I mean, siding, paint, everything that goes into home ownership. So keep in mind that those costs exist as well. So those are kind of just my big nine right there. But you know, there's gonna be a bunch of little things that come up. So I just wanted to make sure you guys know. Before you fully get and commit yourself into the buying process that you know all these costs that are associated happy to answer any more questions that you have or just dive in deeper uh, to any of these specific topics I talked about but again there are costs that are associated after, before you buy a home while you're buying a home and post buying a home so hopefully you found this use this video useful um, please comment below if you guys have any questions uh, like the video share it with your friends I appreciate you guys listening and you guys have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.